Hey everybody, MakerDP here. So recently in the UAD forums, there's been a discussion about uh, sample delay timing in uh, using uh, ADAT converters through um, Apollos. And um, I was curious because I recently picked up a Digimax uh, D8, PreSonus Digimax D8, so I could record my van live. We were hoping to start that up later this month. And um, I was curious, you know, I never really used ADAT a whole lot before, and I wanted to give it a shot to see if there, well, I know there will be, but how much delay there actually is, because Matt Hepworth, owner of the forums, has a handy spreadsheet uh, that gives delay times in samples for uh, different ADAT interfaces, but the D8 is not one of them. So I was just curious, what is the delay? Can I hear the difference? Does it matter? Some people say it matters. Some people say it doesn't. Some people say it only matters if you're like miking up a drum kit and you might be using five of the preamps on your ADAT and three on the Apollo or, you know, something like that. Then it definitely matters. But, you know, who knows? I wanted to see for myself. So here's what I did. In uh, Studio One, I created a very simple drum loop. And it sounds like this just so I can get something that has a nice transient, right? So um, I can measure the onsets of things and everything. So um, I've got that real simple drum loop going on in um, Studio One on my Windows laptop, and I go out of that into the auxiliary outputs of my other uh, spare interface, my PreSonus 1810, and I went out of three auxiliary outputs. Now, one of the outputs I went into my Twin Mark II. One of the outputs I went into my um, Quad Silverface. And one of the outputs I went into the PreSonus Digimax D8. Okay. And I did my very, very best to match levels, but that really doesn't really change things a whole lot here. Maybe a little bit, maybe not, but probably not. I got them pretty darn close. So you heard that. Now what I did here in Luna is um, I took the Twin Mark II and the PreSonus D8 and I panned them hard left and right and I converted collapsos down into a stereo track right here. On the left is the Apollo Twin and on the right is the ADAP D8. Okay. And I um, am going to run them through. Now watch what happens. Um, okay, that's off. All right, good. So I'm going to turn on my PAS analyzer here. I'm going to clear my meters, and I'm going to press play. And watch what happens. Now, I don't know if you can hear it in your speakers or in your headphones, but the phasing does sound a little bit weird. Okay, it's, it's not right. It's loosey, it's smushy, it's gooshy. There's no solidness to it. It's kind of phasing out in my ears and this is telling me exactly what I'm hearing right here. See these anti-phase um, hits right here on the transient. You know, it's just, it's not right. The phase is not right. So I loaded it up into in phase, which is really cool. Now I'm going to turn this bad boy on. Waves in phase and I'm going to capture and there, the audio is captured. I'm going to zoom out. Like so. I'm going to drag this guy up to the very beginning of the transient. I'm going to start zooming in so I can see exactly what's going on here. And I'm going to drag this guy over here like that. Unfortunately, it's, it takes some fiddling to get there. But hey, you get there. So I'm going to move this. Fortunately, that stays centered and it recenters everything according to where I have my marker there as such. And I've got it fully zoomed in. There we go. Now, fully zoomed in, you can see. So on the left, on this top graph, the blue one here, again, is um, the Apollo twin. And the bottom is the D8. And so you can see it's behind. It, there definitely is a delay on the ADAT. So, watch what happens now. What I can do is I can just simply use my mouse wheel on the bottom here, and I can pull this forward in time. Now, do you hear that going? you hear that changing in your headphones? Woo! 
Careful, don't get nauseated. Um, so I'm going to get it as close as I can, and that looks pretty darn close with the eyeballs. I'm zoomed in all the way. Yep, so that looks pretty darn close. So let me clear my paths here. Oh, I'm still getting some teeny anti-phase tails there. So there's probably room for improvement. So maybe going just a little bit less. I don't know. Let's try negative 0.5 milliseconds. And that'll change it to 24 samples. Let's clear my meters. There we go. That's it. That's it right there. Perfect phase. Okay, so yeah. So it's 24 samples late. The D8 is 24 samples late at 48K hertz. That's what I recorded at 48K, if I didn't mention that before. So it's about a half a millisecond, which um, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but <laughs> you could hear it, right? Listen to that. That's 0.58 milliseconds. 0 0.54, 0 0.5, 0 0.46. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Ooh. Hope you're not getting seasick. 24 samples. So I nudged it to the left. That's what this negative 24 right here means. I shifted that 24 milliseconds to the left to get it phase aligned. And now it's nice and phase aligned as verified by my uh, stereo coherence meter so hey maker dp here um, it's kind of fun to do this kind of stuff and just kind of put some of that theory think into science and uh, see what our ears are hearing once in a while so have a great day let me know if you have any questions